morning everyone. Uh, welcome to the forest of Hilversum on the forest floor of all the bugs this morning. Uh, I was going to set up a hide here but uh, I'm not actually allowed, I doubt it, so I'm just hiding on the forest floor. But basically I hope you like those uh, nut hatches. I found a little nest of nut hatches on the way here this morning. Uh, this is actually a smaller forest near my house and I actually came here for a walk with my girlfriend and I stumbled across a woodpecker's nest. Now I knew it was a woodpecker's nest because when the male flew up to this tree the female then suddenly flew out the other hole the other side so I gathered it was. So I just held back and watched it for a bit and it was. That was a few days ago. I didn't know if they fledged or not so I've come back. Uh, the good news is they haven't fledged yet. They're still in the nest. Anyway. We're going to carry on, see what we can see, and uh, hopefully you'll enjoy some nice Woody the Woodpecker action, uh, and some chicks and some holes. Anyway, peace. <laughs> right, we'll have a little uh, coffee time chat. So um, yeah, these are greater, uh, great spotted woodpecker. Uh, and they're commonly uh, misidentified, I suppose, with their smaller cousins, the lesser spotted woodpecker, juvenile, like chicks that have just fledged, great spotted woodpeckers. They often get uh, misidentified as lesser uh, spotted woodpeckers because they're slightly smaller. Uh, but you can tell because the greater, even the juveniles have these white shoulders, like these white shoulder pads, and the lesser uh, spotted woodpecker doesn't have that. So that's one way to tell. Oh, it's just coming in, hang on. I keep seeing just the male come in at the moment. You see it just bringing out that sack of what I was telling you about. Bring in food, take out poo. <laughs> That's their job all, all spring and summer. Many people think that actually the smaller, lesser spotted woodpeckers are sort of being more driven out by these bigger cousins um, because as well they do like to uh, predate on, on other chicks. Uh, so they can get the uh, the brunt of it as well of a woodpecker's raiding nest and also yeah They use the same nest and habitat so they do compete with them So the bigger ones normally win and that's the case here uh, You do get lesser ones around here, but not as common. So they're really good at climbing. They've got those um, Four toes so the two toes going that way two toes going that way you do have a free toed woodpecker as well I believe um, but yeah, this is great for just climbing up and down trees, you know, and they live off insects, grubs, um, seeds, pine cones, pine seeds, especially uh, during the harder times, they'll eat them. Uh, and they don't really migrate, but if they have a, if, especially if there's a habitat of woods that had like a, a disease on the pine cones or a bad harvest, sometimes they do migrate across, uh, but they're normally here all year round. Yeah. They normally have, I think, around three or five chicks. Um, survival rates, you know, no, no one really knows too much. I heard a lot of them do die by, oh, he's come in again. Again, it's the male. I don't know where the female is. Yeah, what's the thing? Yeah, uh, a lot of chicks actually die by flying into windows, believe it or not. So um, that's quite a common way for them to die. Uh, but they have got, you know, amazing cushion. You know, they're designed to hammer trees and pine cones and stuff. Uh, blackbirds just landed near me um, but they've got like a special jaw and muscles there to cushion the impact and muscles on top of their head that then cushions that impact so it's just flown up off there so this is what he'll do he'll, he'll go into the nest feed it take some sacks out fly over to this tree probably clean themselves up birds are quite they like to keep clean and probably clean its beak up and stuff afterwards and then off a go it goes hunting. Oh yeah, they own, they normally just have one brood as well. Um, so even if unsuccessful, it's normally only one brood. So that normally means it has to be quite successful for them to carry on. Um, this one looks like it's been successful so far. It does make me wonder where this female is because I've only seen the male so far. That'll be interesting to keep look out maybe something's happened to her I'm not too sure yeah and obviously what you may have seen in my other videos before is they do this sort of courtship dance male and females when they come you know sexually active after about one year 
you know and they do this sort of fluttering dance kind of thing and they also drum both male and females drum that's normally they normally do this from december time till till june and that's normally them you know vocalizing their territory because each one i think it's about nine acre uh, hectares kind of thing a, a typical uh, woodpecker pair will have to themselves and they say yeah like young uh, males can even drum up to like 600 times a day you know when they're trying to get that first uh, female um, especially in June when you know this is their last chance you'll hear especially if you do hear one being very vocal that could just be a young one that's you know not being successful to find a mate so far this year the youngs also yeah like they have that scarlet cap you know a bigger cap whereas which is the same as a lesser uh, spotted woodpecker but a great spotted woodpecker the males have like a crown it's like more over the back of the head whatever whereas a cap is more covering the whole of the front that's what they say crown capped identified birds um but yeah the all all the juveniles will have that scarlet cap um for their first pl uh, until they get rid of their first plumage um and then obviously the males then turn to the crown and then the females will go all black but yeah i'm actually a bit worried i think the um something's happened to the female here because well i've been here over an hour now and i've seen the male come and go lots of times but i haven't seen the female at all so uh oh one's coming in again now i'm still recording actually i'm gonna do a lot of that i'm gonna go through memory card space today Oh, there's the female. There is the female. And I think the male's just flown in too. Oh, yeah. Okay, that's good. Oh, so that's it. There is, uh, yeah, I was getting a bit worried. I didn't see the female, but yeah, it looks like maybe uh, she was going a bit further. Maybe she was having a bit of me time, you know, getting herself something to eat. Because you know, they work tirelessly, you know, in this time of year, just getting these chicks just using every bit of their energy from sunrise to sundown they are collecting food and it's you know this is how brutal the nature natural world is you know if it's raining one day or whatever and you don't chicks will die you know needles sitting there as well that's ah, nice i have a little coffee watch some woodpeckers the nut hatches as well were pretty cool obviously very close in uh, species but um those chicks look to have one at the front obviously that you always that's a thing with chicks as well you always get one big one at the front and then once he gets too big he takes all the food i think that was the case with those nut hatches that big one they look like they were he was very curious to go outside i wouldn't be surprised if they start coming out and stretching their wings soon there's a weird kind of goose fight going on, some Egyptian geese up on a tree. Don't know what they're doing. I really want to just concentrate on like nesting birds today to see how many nests we can find. Now we found the nut hatch, which was lovely. I might go check them back out because they look like they're about to fledge, especially that big one. Um, yeah, hopefully we just find some other nests around here. Um, it's a bit harder than earlier in the spring because now all these leaves have budded so it's a, a lot thicker the undergrowth and the canopy uh, to find the nest but hopefully uh, some birds will give some tips 
so I'm uh, going to leave the woodpeckers to it now. Um, maybe check up on them another day. See how long they are until they fledge. Um, I might go wander back. That nut hatch is just around the corner. So I might check them out, see if the lighting's improved a bit. It was a bit dark earlier. Um, now the sun's breaking through. Uh, might get some nicer shots. I want to take you to a distant star and start a colony. You know it doesn't matter who we are, we'll be the king and queen. Different shade of blue over me and you brand new feel. And we'll be chatting by the fireside, the new deal. So I just got back to the, the nut hatch nest. I'm sorry about the road. We're right on the edge of the forest now. Um, yeah, I just got back to the nut hatch nest and I noticed that it was bringing in all kinds of animal uh, insects for the nest, but nothing was coming out. And that big chick at the front was so dominant earlier, sticking its head out. I thought that was a bit strange that they weren't coming up for food. And I noticed it came in with, if you look at these pictures here, it had a ladybug, a caterpillar, I think some dragonflies, all came into the nest and left without being eaten. So I thought, oh, maybe something's happened. And then I thought, maybe it's fledged. Uh, and then, sure enough, I found, if you can see here, it's a bit of a hard shot to get because it was quite high up. That's actually the chick. You can see it prune, prune, pruning its feathers after being in that nest for that long and sort of stretching its wings. Um, so sorry about the noise, I hope it's not too bad. Um, but yeah, so it was stretching its wings, so it's obviously just fledged, and the mother and father are still taking insects to it, that's how I found it. Uh, but it does make me think that maybe, maybe they thought there were other chicks in there, but because, you know, they're so relentless feeding, they just see the open beak, and it, they just regurgitate it. So I got a feeling that the other chicks didn't make it. As I'm looking round, I can't see them going to any other chicks. I think it was just that one, but I may be mistaken. So I'm going to try and see if I can find any other chicks. Um, but yeah, literally just missed the fledge, uh, you know, by an hour or so. I'm pretty gutted we went and saw the woodpeckers because that would have been good to capture. Uh, but let's just try and follow this uh, chick's first moments out the nest because obviously it's the most. I keep looking up there, trying to keep an eye on it. Uh, it's the most vulnerable time for the chick, um, you know, many predators around, especially when it can't fly or anything yet, you know, that could be a big risk for it. So a jay has just flown up, and obviously jays are notorious predators for chicks and stuff like that. It's just on this branch in front of me, um, as you can see in this shot here. Now, the mother and father are calling um, really loud to say, come look at me, look at me, because the chick is just over there, right next to it. So it's saying, calling it, calling it, and then, now it's, it's actually luring them away from the chick. And you can see it moving across now. Uh, it just escaped its first near-death uh, experience here. <laughs> Um, because if that Jay saw it, it certainly would have gobbled it up and then probably fed it to its own chicks as well. Um, so that was a lucky roll of the dice. Uh, lucky the mother and father uh, did well because obviously that was its, I think that's its only chick left as well. Unless there are other ones fledged, I still haven't seen any. Yeah, I've uh, left the nut hatch, the one remaining chick. Um, it's just so noisy with the cars there. Uh, but it was nice to see them and they kept, you saw the last shot, it sort of fell off the branch nearly and then flew onto another one. And I think the chick's just moving from branch to branch near that area. And the male and female coming back every now and then. Not that regular by the looks of it. Um, but yeah, I don't actually know how long they'll carry on feeding them after their fledge. I'll uh, put it up here. I've got no hands to point. 
but I'm sure I'll put it in the edit. So, as you can see, I found another woodpecker's nest. It's actually really close to the other one, but this chick's a lot bigger. You can hear the difference in the chick's call, and it's calling out lots. Uh, I think it's only a matter of time before it fledges, um, so that's really good news. I'm going to see if we can stay here. It's right on the main path, so it's quite easy to film as well. No branches or anything in the way, so that's good. And you can see right into the nest in the hole, as you can see here. And I've got a feeling this is going to fledge any minute. Um, the male came along, started feeding insects and then flew on a branch nearby and started calling the chick out. Uh, and it nearly encouraged the chick to come all the way out, as you can see here. Um, so I think it's a matter of hours before it fledges. So I might stay here for a bit, um, but if it's stubborn and stays in its nest, I'll uh, go and explore. I just was walking along this path next to this riverbank and I actually saw two roe deer uh, eating newly shrubbed trees, even a holly leaf, which was quite surprising. I thought it would be a bit too prickly for them. Um, but that was nice, saw them, and then a uh, juvenile, newly fledged woodpecker landed right next to me on this tree behind me, so really close. Uh, I sort of froze and quickly got it on camera. Uh, he then flew to the riverbank behind me uh, and he was actually eating, turning over all the dead leaves and along the riverbank and actually looking for, you know, insects and stuff and actually was quite successful by the looks of it. Then for some strange reason, he sort of just kamikaze into the water. Uh, I don't know if he didn't see it or the reflection confused him, but he certainly noticed when he got in and panicked. He panicked. Uh, got to the bank the other side, uh, got caught in a bramble, looked quite painful, um, managed to drag himself up this bank and climb on this tree, shake it off and uh, probably drying off now. Uh, the male or female did come in, I didn't look at when I saw it for recording which was a male or female, uh, but you can probably see now. Um, and it probably just came to see if it was right, it didn't feed the juvenile so maybe it stopped feeding it. Um, but yeah, it was giving off an alarm call, so it definitely came to check it out. Now, this is actually perfect because this is exactly what I set out to do today. And that's to show all the stages of the woodpecker's nest. Um, and that is from like being fed within the nest by the mum and dad, uh, all the way to about to fledge. And then obviously just fledged and uh, learning its way in this big wide world. Um, so yeah. 
I'm quite happy that what I set out I've managed to do. Um, so I hope you enjoyed that. Now I'm just going to walk. Um, it's really hot today. It's like 25 degrees already. So I apologise. I'm a bit sweaty. Um, but there's going to be some sort of manor house parks, I think, down here. And this is like in West Hilversum. So I don't really know this area as much. Uh, but I've got a feeling there's going to be lots of deer, especially when it cools down. Maybe some buzzards in the open fields. It's not much like heather, like in the other two places. It's a lot more grassland and sort of woods so maybe even some hares and some rabbits and stuff so uh, we're going to venture a bit further down and uh, just use these long uh, spring days to see as much wildlife as we can today just stumbled across uh, this is the estate garden in Hoylust in Hilversum and just behind me there's sort of a sort of their garden if you like uh, from the estate and it's full of brown hair now they're hiding in the shade at the moment quite hunkered down low uh, but I'm gonna spend the rest of the afternoon and what sunlight I get with the hairs and to see if I can get some nice photos because um, they're quite hard to take photos because they're always hunkered down and it's the only time you get to really see them here is in uh, summertime uh, when the night's longer so they have to come out earlier to feed uh, so uh, instead of looking at my ugly mug uh, let's look at these brown hairs and uh, learn a bit more about them European brown hair. Now these are still laying low in the shadows uh, till the sun comes down, uh, which is a smart move because I think I'm going to do the same, otherwise I'm going to cook myself. Now these are obviously bigger than the uh, normal rabbits. Um, these are called has, is uh, hair in uh, Dutch. Um, but uh, the rabbits are a lot smaller, uh, a lot slower as well. These hairs can run up to about 35 miles an hour. Uh, so they're quick and they've got, you can tell them apart because they have these big brown ears with these black tips always sticking up and these big bulbous brown eyes to help it see at night. Um, and obviously these extraordinary long legs that sort of, you know, fire it across the ground. And if you see them in full pelt, you know, it's really impressive. Um, obviously you get a gnaw, you know, not going to beat around the bush, you get knobheads, especially in Essex and stuff that still you know, uh, chase these uh, with greyhounds. And greyhounds are actually slightly faster than uh, than hares, but obviously hares are a lot more agile and they have a lot more agility. So that's why they do it as a good, they think is a good sport because obviously the agility of the hare and the speed of the greyhound and they end up tearing them to pieces. But it's a real shame and, you know, they are lovely, lovely um, animals. And obviously they don't suffer with mixomatosis uh, like... Um, other rabbit species especially that have been brought in in England and elsewhere so these managed to hold on in good numbers but um, the Mad March Boxing Hare and most people think it's actually um, the males fighting but often the time it's actually the female you know fighting off the male to, to really find the best partner you know and really put them through its paces uh, but that's normally in March obviously according to its name 
uh, but now I don't know if uh, if these will be having any uh, litter around here soon but these just seem like uh, two fully grown ones um, but I'm just going to uh, spend the evening with the hares I think because they're so beautiful hopefully get some nice uh, slow motion footage of them running across the fields that would be beautiful If you never come around, how we ever gonna be? If you're always on the ground, then you're never gonna see what falling feels like. If you never come around, how we ever gonna be? If you're always on the ground, then you're never gonna see what falling feels like. So it's been a beautiful day and the weather has been beautiful as well. Uh, I am a bit hot and I'm looking forward to getting home to a nice glass of water. Um, I've seen a lot of stuff today. I'm really happy with what I got on the back of the camera. I'm looking forward to getting back and uh, checking it all out in the computer and hopefully it's as good as it does in the back of the camera. Um, I'm glad that I've actually managed to set out my goal and actually see all the different uh, stages of the fledging of the, the uh, woodpeckers, so that was great fun. Um, but in the meantime, uh, peace, stay safe, and I'll catch you on the next one.